for it. Let me first say thank you, Shantavia. That's right, Shantavia Esquire is in the building. And, you know, we were talking off mic, and let me welcome the people. Uh, you know, you were like, how's it going? And I was like, I'm grateful to have these sessions with you to talk about the greatness, to talk about the, the things people have done, because we need to know that we've always been great. We're great, we've been great, we've always been great. And if they have done it, if they did it in the 1800s, they did it last year, we can do it again. And so I'm just grateful that we're doing these patent series, these inventor series with you, Shantavia Esquire Johnson, thank you. Well, here. thank you. Thank you so much for the work. Thank you for educating people because as we see, we can't rely on anybody else to educate us but ourselves. So I appreciate you picking up the baton and doing that, Karen. You are changing people's lives and I'm just happy to be along for the journey. Listen, if one person watching this, if just one person says, I think I can invent something. I think I can go get a patent. I think we've done everything we were put here to do. So I'm, I'm expecting some things to be invented from this series. Me too, me too. I wanna see that happen for sure. <laughs> so who are we talking about tonight? All right, so Marie Van Britten Brown, and many people have not heard I'm of gonna, I gotta write this down. Okay. Marie, Marie Van Britten, so V-A-N, Britten, B-R-I-T-T-A-N, Brown, Marie Van Britten Brown. Beautiful name. And, oh my gosh, she has changed many of our lives. She will continue to change people's lives with her invention. So Marie Van Britten Brown, if you've never heard of her, invented really one of the first, if not the first, home security system. She and her husband together. And it's, it's an amazing invention for so many reasons I know we're going to unpack, but we have to start with the fact that she was born in 1922. And she was born in Queens in New York. She died in Queens, so she spent just about all of her life, what we know about it in Queens. And she invented this home security system with her husband at a time where it was hard for women to even have access to the patent office. It was even more difficult for black people to have access to the patent office. So you put those things together and it was just amazing. She, she created this invention in 1966. So this was right around the time of the Civil Rights Act, right around the time that things were really starting to open up for black people in America. And she invented a very early home security system. Uh, so, you know, as you were talking, born in 1922, that means she lived through the Great Depression. Mm -hmm. And I think about, you know, Annie Turnbull Malone and Madam C.J. Walker and so many people that invented during the Great Depression that rose up or, th or survived the Great Depression to go on to do things. You know, for many Americans, it was the end. For a lot of us Black folk who were already in a Great Depression out of slavery, you know, it was an opportunity to figure out how to innovate. So when you think about home security in Queens, New York, right? Um, what, what did that look like? You know, we have ADP, now we have Ring, you know, which is kind of home security, kind of like, you know, I'm taking a picture of you or a video of you at my door, stealing my packages. But you know, <laughs> what, what did that look like? Gosh, so I, I love that you started with the Great Depression because what we saw many Black inventors doing shortly out of the Great Depression was inventing out of necessity. Really, Black inventors, for as long as we've been in America, we have been inventing out of necessity for many of us. And so she did too. She was a nurse. She didn't work regular hours. Her husband was an electrician. And so living in Queens, New York, she was alone at home at odd times of day and night. She was coming in and out of her house at all times of day and night. And the crime rates in her neighborhood had increased. And not only had crime rates increased, but as many of us know, when people would call the, the, the cops to come respond, they were notoriously slow in her neighborhood. Like it was well documented that her neighborhood in particular, like the police just did not come. So she invented out of necessity because she wanted a way to feel more safe in her home. 
And so her husband was an electrician. It was at least what historians think is that it was mostly her idea. Her husband was an electrician. So he helped put all the pieces together. But this was really an amazing invention because this is before, this is 1966. So this is before cell phones, before the internet, before really disposable cameras, all these things that we just take for granted now, cell phones, all these things. So there was a camera. So like you talked about ring, this is like the, I was gonna say grandfather, but grandmother, <laughs> the grandmother to the ring. So part of it was a camera that could take pictures of people at different heights. So one of the real concerns she had was really about adults, not kids. There were lots of kids in the neighborhood and that kind of thing. So they had a camera that would take photos of you at four different levels to figure out if you were an adult or a child. That camera was connected to a television inside the house so that if you were inside the house in 1966, you could see who was at your door. And then the other thing that was incredible for the 60s, knowing the lack of technology that existed at the time, was this closed circuit that allowed you to talk to the person. And if you thought it was somebody coming to rob you, you could push a button and it would sound an alarm to let your neighbors know, to let the neighborhood watch know. And if a cop happened to be in the neighborhood, to let a, 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 a cop know too. That, you know, when you when you're, as you're describing this, again, there are very few people right now that can imagine a world without a cell phone. I actually grew up in a period where my phone was attached to a wall with a cord, you know, and the only way to get around your house was to buy the biggest cord because they were selling these giant cords and they would get all tangled up. And my job in the house was to untangle the cord because I hated the old jumble cord. You would put your finger in to dial the phone. I remember when it went to push button. That was a great innovation. You could do like, um, you could crank call people. There was a phone book. You could, I mean, there was so many things that we didn't have, right? The television with the rabbit ears and you would have to put foil on the, on the rabbit ears sometimes to get a clear picture. Now everything's digital. I don't know if people can imagine what this woman did in a time that I'm sure Ring probably was like, hey, I can do better now with technology, well, she was first. Marie Van Britten Brown. I mean, that, that is incredible that you could be in your home and see somebody at your door, which is what I could do right now with my ring. Yeah, I mean, it really was incredible because this was literally the first home surveillance system that existed. People had invented pieces of it before. So you had televisions, you had a remotely operated button, you had all these, some of the pieces but nobody was doing this in a way that allowed us to protect our homes. And now, like you mentioned, every other person has a ring or has their cell phone or has whatever, but she was the first, she was the first. And when that patent was issued in 1969, so it took a few years to work through the patent office, she was actually featured in the New York Times. And she was featured in the New York Times at a time where very few black women <laughs> were being featured in the New York Times. So she was a pioneer for so many different reasons and a pioneer in this space where there were not that many black women inventors. What was the patent number? Cause that's always important. And I think, you know, guys, y'all are watching this, write down the patent numbers because that's the value, you mm -hmm. know, we need to remember and we mm -hmm. to have that patent number gives us the tie and the connection to history. So what was the patent number? So the patent you? number was three, Four eight two zero three seven three four eight two zero three seven. And the thing about patent numbers, so Karen, you stated that very eloquently. This connects us to our past and to our present. And the reason I say that is because any of us right now, you have Google on your phone, on your laptop, on your whatever. You can visit Google Patents. It's just Google.com/patents type in that patent number and it'll pull up the patent, but what it will also show you is the history. And what the history will show you is that since uh, Marie Van Britten Brown's invention came out in 1969, 13 different inventions have been based on her technology since then, including one that was just like a few years ago in 2013 or 14. And so you have this black woman in the 60s inventing something that even today 
is being used by inventors and innovators to create new technology and doing it in a space. So all of us know about home security systems and that kind of thing. This is a $2 billion a year business. And much of it is built on the foundation of this invention from a black woman who never actually had the opportunity to commercialize her invention. And there's no real history about why that is, but we know obviously as a black woman, it would have been very, very difficult for her to get a manufacturer, to do all the different things at that period of time that she would have needed to do to create a, a, a commercially viable product. But we know it was a commercially viable product because look around at us right now, this $2 billion year industry built off of her invention. I wonder, she died in 1999, like if she had children, you know, did she die penniless? You know, when we talk about Henrietta Lacks, which we have, you know, that she did die and her family didn't have a lot of money, even though trillions of dollars were made off of her cells and mm -hmm. patents made off of her cells. You, you, you wonder about people who innovate and how they don't get to capitalize oftentimes off of the things that they invent. And that's the saddest thing to me, you know, but we will keep her name alive and hopefully honor her memory. And I wonder if anybody out there, if you know, you know, the, the Van Britten Browns of Queens, New York, Jamaica, um, and if there are any of her relatives still living and what they're doing, if any of them followed in her footsteps, I'm just really curious because we got to keep that memory alive. That's right. So my understanding is she did have at least one child, a daughter who also became a nurse. Like she was a nurse professionally. I do not know anything about their family history, but she was recognized at least once. She did receive an award during her life. So she got some of her flowers while she was alive by the National Science Committee because of the scope of her invention and the way that it impacted so, so many different um, industries. So if you think about it, her invention laid the foundation for things like video monitoring, remote control door locks, alarm triggers, instant messaging to security providers and police, two-way voice communication, all those things that we take for granted right now that we can all do with our cell phones, her invention laid the foundation for that. And many companies still use those closed circuit systems that she invented in the 1960s. So Marie Van Britten Brown, as long as we continue to say her name, she will never die. Patent number 3482037, which means 3,482,037 patents, 36 patents before that one. Mm -hmm. uh, but she's in the annals of history for creating a security system, one of the first home security systems in our nation, uh, born in 1922. Let me thank you uh, for bringing this to light, uh, Shantavia, and to tell people how they can connect with you because you help people create patents, you help people trademark, you help people with their intellectual property. So how can they connect with you? They do. What I say is I help people build the brand and the business that they were made for. And you have to do so many things to do that. But ultimately, it's about falling within line within the thing you were made to do. And so the way people can find me is at Shantavia.com, S-H-O-N-T-A-V-I-A.com. You can also follow me anywhere there's social media at Shantavia, J-E-S-Q, anywhere on all platforms, Shantavia, J-E-S-Q. And, and I pontificate about a lot of things. I rant about a lot of things. And ultimately I do that because I know the power of ownership. And that's the thing that's so important about the work you're doing, Karen, teaching people the value of ownership and how much has been taken away from black communities because either we didn't know or didn't have access to the resources to own our stuff. America, it was built on intellectual property. The greatest export from the United States right now is intellectual property. And so my entire business, my entire structure, everything I do online revolves around understanding that concept very deeply and wanting to educate people about how they can leverage their intellectual assets. So there's no excuse y'all. Uh, subscribe to the channel, follow Shantavia, because she's the only one in the world, Shantavia, shantavia.com. She got her full name, dot com, <laughs> and Shant Shantavia Johnson, Shantavia J S on all social media platforms. I appreciate this patent series, this inventor series, and I appreciate Marie Van Britten Brown. Thank you so much for sharing her with us today. Thank you.